Okay, now it's on. All right, good. Uh, welcome to Worship at Zion this morning, and welcome back to Central Standard Time. We'd like to thank you for all your generous offerings to continue the ministry of Zion during this pandemic time. And Holy Communion, communion is celebrated today. Um, you should have picked up a little communion kit as you came in. Uh, if you don't have one, would you raise your hand and Dwayne and Dylan will bring one to you. Has everybody got one? Great. Directions will be given at the time when we use them. Uh, remember, you will be ushered out at the end of the service. And today we are honored to have with us Pastor Walt Swano from Decorah. So welcome, Pastor Walt. The Council of Zion is really concerned with the number of cases of COVID-19. The increases are coming locally and statewide, as well as nationally and, and worldwide. We're very concerned about keeping you safe, and we appreciate your help by wearing masks, not only here in worship, but also in public. Please note that changes in worship practices are gonna be being made, probably, starting today, there will not be congregational singing. You are invited to close your eyes, use this time for meditation on the words. Um, today's so, um, song leader will be Doug, and he will sing the hymns. You can also hum along, but probably not too loud. Uh, the council is monitoring our options and may in the future suspend our in-person worship with just our online worship available. So please know that we care about your safety. We also want to help protect our brothers and sisters in Christ as well as our neighbors. So continue to wear masks, social distance, and wash hands often. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to worship on this All Saints Sunday, a Sunday when we remember those who have passed away from the congregation this past year, but we remember in a general way those saints who have touched our lives over the years, who've gone um, to be a part of that heavenly cloud of witnesses now, who are cheering us on uh, from heaven. We begin with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides our beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door for us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
doth your scepter claim all in heaven above adore you infinite your vast domain everlasting is your reign hark the glad celestial hymn angel choirs above are raising cherubim and seraphim in unceasing chorus praising fill the hands with sweet accord holy 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 lord holy father holy son holy spirit three we name you though in essence only one undivided god we claim you and adoring bend the knee while we own the mystery let us pray Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion, in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these? robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of a great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand as you're able for a reading of the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak, and he taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you in peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I I want to say what a treat it is to be here with you this morning in West Union. Um, I don't know that I've ever been to West Union before. However, I do know some of your members and that... In particular, I've known Doug and Leslie Poppin uh, for three or four years. And I have to explain that story just a little bit. Um, I've known them because um, the last church that I served before I retired in July was Greenfield Lutheran in Harmony, Minnesota. Our choir director at the time was Sandy Strozik, who is a first cousin to Leslie Poppin. And a few years ago, you brought your choir up to the church that I was serving at the time, Greenfield Lutheran, and um, the choir came and sang with our choir, our joint choirs together. It was such a wonderful treat. And then to hear uh, Doug sing today uh, reminded me that Doug is the assistant director of Luren Singers in Decorah, and I also sing uh, in Luren, so I've known Doug uh, through that connection as well. So I feel right at home here, and what a beautiful sanctuary you have. So it is a treat to be here, especially to be here on this All Saints Sunday. You know, it's a special Sunday in the church calendar. We remember those from the congregation who have died in this past year. And I imagine some of you are here today because you are here to remember a loved one who's who's passed away this year. In our service, we read their names, we light the candles, we give thanks to God for their lives and for their witness to God's love among us. So let me ask you this morning, who are the saints in your life? You know, I've noticed in social media during this stressful pandemic time that there are many people who are missing loved ones I see social media posts like people are saying what they wouldn't give for just one more day, one more hour, one more conversation with mom or with dad or grandma or grandpa. You know, it's a common feeling. Who are you missing today? Who are the saints in your lives? You remember them because they loved you. They invested time and energy and love in you. They showed you God's love through their words and their actions. Who are the saints in your life? There have been several saints in my life, and I want to introduce you to one in particular this morning. This is my great aunt, Adela Simonson. She was born in 1896. She never married. She never had children. 
And yet, in her small community, she was a mother to many, showering her love upon them to the point that people even named their children after her. I have to tell you this little story. When I was a pastor in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and I went to central uh, South Dakota, right on the North Dakota border uh, for a week of Bible camp, and I remember one night sitting down at the campfire next to this young woman who was a camp counselor. And I introduced myself to her and uh, she introduced herself to me. Her name was Adila. And I said, oh, my great aunt's name was Adila. And she said to me, well, it wasn't Adila Simonson, was it? My mouth just dropped open. And then she told me that her mother had named her after my great aunt. That's when I learned how much love that my great aunt had shown to so many people in the community through her words and through her actions. When I was a college student in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, um, I remember going down to visit my aunt, my great aunt Adila, and going to uh, spend weekend with her Uh, It was a wonderful weekend. She was, we played endless games of Scrabble and she was a tough competitor. But the love that she shared with me was so very real. She wanted me to hear the stories of my family. She wanted me to know about her parents, my great grandparents. They had immigrated from Norway. My great-grandfather immigrated in 1867, and then he settled and homesteaded in the southeast corner of South Dakota um, in 1868. And he built a home, and then he sent for um, his, um, his betrothed, uh, my great-grandmother, Alina, to come from uh, Norway in 1870. I learned that they were first cousins. And I thought, well, that sure explains a lot about my weird and crazy family. (laughs) You know, I often joke with people that I'm 100% Norwegian, but I'm taking pills for it. (laughs) But I think there's something else in the DNA that's a little bit strange. Um, Anyway, my great aunt, wanted me to hear these stories about her family, how they homesteaded, how they worked hard to build a life together there on the Dakota prairies. It was important to her to tell me stories about my great-grandparents and how the faith in God sustained them through the death of five infant children. Can you imagine that? She told me about her brother, Sigurd, who was a precocious young boy who loved to play church. He would go into the the barn. He'd stand on a box and pretend like he was the pastor giving the sermon. And he would take a little doll and he would baptize it. He loved to play church. And yet he died at the age of three of brain fever. My great aunt brought out my great grandfather's diary and she read to me from this diary. She translated from the Norwegian and the heartfelt grief that was expressed in those words, but also the faith in God and the hope that sustained my great grandparents. You know, those moments with my great aunt, Adila, will stay with me forever. And somehow in sharing those stories and sharing her love with me, She gave me a better glimpse of God's love for me and for all people. So let me ask you again, who are the saints in your life? You know, we all have them, people who loved us and in their loving us showed us a God of love and mercy. They lived and demonstrated the kind of values that we find in our gospel reading today uh, from Matthew's gospel, values like humility, mercy, meekness, purity, justice, peacemaking. Our gospel reading from Matthew chapter 5 is the very beginning of a three-chapter long sermon called the Sermon on the Mount. And the section which I read for you this morning is called the Beatitudes. 
Now in Matthew's gospel, Jesus is the new Moses. Moses climbed the mountain and he came back with the law, the commandments. But Jesus climbed the mountain and he taught us the Beatitudes. The Ten Commandments largely teach us what not to do in order to have a healthy community. Don't lie, don't steal, don't kill, don't commit adultery. But in the Beatitudes, Jesus teaches us the values that bring us to the very heart of God's blessing for us. Blessed are the poor in spirit, the humble. Blessed are the mourners, the meek, the merciful, the pure in heart, the peacemakers. So I want to take you on a little trip this morning uh, to the land of Israel. In 2011, I had the opportunity to visit Israel. One of my favorite places was along the north shore of the Sea of Galilee. You know, by Minnesota standards, the Sea of Galilee is really more like a large lake. (laughs) There on the north shore, the hills gently rise out of the sea. And this is the traditional site that Jesus gave the Sermon on the Mount. It's a beautiful setting on the hill overlooking the sea. Lush vegetation is everywhere with beautiful flowers and vibrant colors. And there's a church on that spot. It's called the Church of the Beatitudes. The dome of the church is octagonal shaped, the eight sides representing eight Beatitudes. The day that we visited was beautiful and peaceful. We looked out over the hillside, and I could imagine Jesus assembled there with a crowd of people 2,000 years ago, and those people sitting down to listen to Jesus teach. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. The people listened to Jesus explain these fundamental values of God's kingdom. But what they expected from him and and what he gave them were probably two different things. See, many of them longed for a strong military leader to free them from their Roman conquerors. The Romans, they celebrated victory, power, strength. Blessed are the mighty. Blessed are the strong. Blessed are the conquerors. But Jesus taught just the opposite. Blessed are the meek. Rome used war and military violence to subjugate peoples. But Jesus taught, blessed are the peacemakers. Many of those listening to Jesus that day had grown up on the teaching of the Pharisees. If you work hard and you follow the rules, God will bless you, make you successful, and fill your life with riches and wealth. Blessed are the rich, the proud, the hardworking, But Jesus taught compassion and empathy. Blessed are the merciful. Jesus knew what was in the heart of his listeners and how absolutely opposite his teaching might be. And so he taught them in these Beatitudes where God's blessing was truly to be found. Blessed are the poor in spirit, the mourners, the merciful, the pure in heart, the peacemakers, the persecuted, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. That list must have sounded strange and confusing to those who first heard it. Blessed are the poor in spirit? Really? Blessed are the mourners? Isn't that a strange place to find God's blessing? I learned something interesting that day that we visited the Church of the Beatitudes there in the north shore of the Sea of Galilee. It was built in the 1930s by the Italian dictator Benito Mussolini. And the irony is that Mussolini was a man who built this church and yet he embodied in his life values that were exactly opposite to those that Jesus set forth in the Beatitudes. You may have heard about Mussolini from the history books, but Let me tell you a little bit about him. He was born in 1883, and during his childhood, he gained a reputation for fighting. At age 10, he was expelled from a religious boarding school for stabbing a a classmate in the hand and knifing a girlfriend in the arm. He pinched people at church just to make them cry. Sounds like a bully, doesn't he? And after becoming 
prime minister years later, Mussolini, he gained control by reducing the influence of the Italian courts. He muzzled a free press. He arrested political opponents. He continued condoning racial violence all in order to solidify his power on the country. In 1925, he declared himself to be dictator of Italy. In his youth, Mussolini had claimed to be an atheist, and he had railed against the Catholic Church, going so far as to say that only idiots would believe Bible stories. But after taking power, Mussolini realized that he needed the church in order to help stay in power. And so to gain the church's support, he passed several laws that the church favored. Despite the fact that he had many mistresses himself, he put in place harsh punishments for adultery. And the Pope at that time referred to Mussolini as, quote, the man whom God has sent us, close quote. He said this about a man who was a hypocrite, a racist, and a man without a moral center. You know, history has condemned Mussolini, and the church leaders who supported him have also been condemned. Mussolini is gone, but you know what's still standing? Is that church that he built there on the north shore of the Sea of Galilee. That church is still standing there and still teaching the way of Jesus. What does our world consider to be blessed today? Who are the lucky? Who are the fortunate? Is it those who are rich and successful, good-looking, aggressive, confident, and strong? Blessed are the winners. Blessed are the champions. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst to get to the top. Blessed are the rich. And let's not talk about how they made their money. You know, this may be the world's dream of success, but it's not the dream that Jesus gives us in the Beatitudes. Jesus spent much of his ministry among the poor, the desperate, the sick, and the weak. Strength and good looks and connections and aggressiveness may impress some, but those qualities won't guarantee access to God's blessings. Humility, sorrow, repentance, a longing for change, a reliance on God, these character qualities open the door to God's blessings. Blessed are the humble who realize that there is a higher power than themselves. Blessed are the mourn, or are those who mourn uh, the condition of the world, a condition of poverty and hunger. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness and for justice to try to make the world a better place for all people. Blessed are those who show mercy to those who need help. Blessed are the peacemakers who work to resolve conflict instead of creating hatred and division. Jesus really believed that a person who is poor in spirit or someone who is mourning or persecuted or hunger, hungry for righteousness and justice. These were the people who were blessed by God. Those who are desperate, they cry out to God for help. People who are rich, successful, and beautiful may well go through life relying on their, um, their own natural gifts or wealth, but they are often so full of themselves that they are not open to receiving anything from God. But people who lack these gifts, they turn to God because they are empty and they realize their need for God and God's blessing in their lives. And today, Jesus tells us exactly where we can find that blessing. On this All Saints Sunday, we are called to live in and to practice these Beatitudes. We do it not to get God to love us, 
Because God already loves us. In baptism, we are made saints, a gift of grace that God freely gives us in Jesus. And because we are saints, we follow Jesus out of gratitude for God's love for us. We trust that Jesus' ways are best. Blessing comes from Jesus in following Jesus and doing the things that Jesus did. Jesus lived the Beatitudes in his life and even in his death. And God raised him from the dead as a stamp of approval. In Jesus' death on the cross, God was saying, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. Jesus' way is my way. Today, the saints have a message for us. We don't remember them because they were rich or successful. We remember them because of their love, their compassion, their mercy, and because they pointed us to the source of love, Jesus Christ. May others remember us for that as well. May the peace of God that passes our human understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Let us remember all the saints before God. We praise and bless you, O Holy Trinity. You have taught your church that it is an ageless communion of saints. We thank you for your light, which has burned brightly among us through these saints. As we light these candles, we not only remember and give thanks for these who have gone before us, we also pray that this light will burn on us on in us for all the world to see. Help us to remember the dearly departed as encouragement to saintly living, inspiring us to love and serve in, in <clears throat> excuse me, serve in anticipation of an eternal reunion in you. Remember those from Zion who have died over the course of this last 12 months. Lawrence, Snyder. Doris Rademacher. Bradley Temple. Tim Brugman. Ruth Traeger. Jim Tope. Barbara Temple. Dorleen Alvey. Marie Schneider. Delmar Kern. Ruth Ann Irby. Jean Ostert. At the rising of the sun, and at its going down. Remember them. At the blowing of the wind and in the chill of winter. 
we remember them. At the opening of the buds and in the rebirth of spring, we remember them. At the blueness of the skies and in the warmth of summer, we remember them. At the rustling of the leaves and in the beauty of autumn, we remember them. When we are weary and in need of strength, we remember them. When we are lost and sick at heart, we remember them. When we have joy we crave to share, we remember them. When we have decisions that are difficult to make, we remember them. As long as we live, they too will live. They are now a part of us as we remember them. Please stand for the prayers. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Lord of all the saints, we praise you for evangelists and martyrs who sacrifices witness to your gospel across time and space. Inspire us by their courage to carry our faith to new people and places around us. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is grace. Lord of every place, the universe proclaims your greatness from generation to generation. Bless the work of naturalists, conservationists, and park rangers who train our attention to the wonders of the world you have made. Hear us, Hear O us, God. Yeah. Your mercy is great. Lord of every nation, guide this country, red states and blue states, rural voters and urban voters, young and old, as we share in another national election. Kindle hearts eager to understand our common needs and seek our common good. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of every blessing, your son's blessing came to those living with poverty, grief, hunger, thirst, and persecution. Shape our vision of the saints to match his own. Awaken us to your call to serve all who suffer. Grant healing touch to those who are ill, especially Diane Bielen, Willis Weideman, Brandy Burrow, Robert Royce, infant twins Kip and Ridge Rose, Betty Monroe, Jax Baxter, Betty Johansson, and our special friend Elizabeth of Ethiopia, and the families of friends of Leanna Holbert. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of every venture, anoint us with the missionary spirit of the early church. Bless all new missions of our synod. Empower testimony from new communities of faith to shape a diverse witness to your saving power. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Lord of every time, countless are the multitudes you have called by name and gathered to yourself. Comfort us as we grieve those who have died in the past year. Lawrence, Doris, Bradley, Tim, Ruth, Jim, Barbara, Dorleen, Marie, Delmer, Ruth Ann, and Jean, and for those whom we name in our hearts. In faith, may we join with them in ceaseless praise. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. We share the peace with one another simply by just turning and waving and <laughs> saying, peace be with you. Peace be
The author of Hebrews reminds us that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. We are surrounded by the saints today who give witness to God's love for us. God's love which comes to us in concrete ways, in physical elements like bread and wine. They come to us to remind us that we are God's children, that God has forgiven our, our sins, and that God feeds us with his body and blood in order to strengthen us to do the work that God calls us to do, to share his love with the world. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He blessed it. He broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. We join our hearts and our voices in the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, and forgive those who sin against us, and lead us to but deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, power, and glory are yours, now and forever. I want to invite you to take your uh, prepackaged communion in hand. And just a word of instruction for those of you for whom this is new. There are two flaps on the top. The top uh, flap is clear plastic. And we're going to um, take that and peel it back to reveal the wafer there. I invite you to hold the wafer in your hands. This is the body of Christ given for you. We share in this meal together. And then try not to squeeze the cup too hard as you peel back the bottom layer uh, and reveal that the grape juice that's underneath it. As we hold it together, we are reminded this is the blood of Christ shed for you. We share it together. May the body and blood of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you for the work and the witness of giving God's love to the world and fill you with peace. Amen. Our prayer after communion, let us pray. Lord Jesus, in this simple meal, you have set a banquet. Sustain us on the journey. Strengthen us to care for the least of your beloved children. And give us glad and generous hearts as we meet you on the way. Amen. May the blessing of God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, sovereign, Savior, and Spirit be with you today and always. Amen. Our sending song is Shall We Gather at the River, which will be sung by Doug Poppin. I
Beloved of God, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Again, let me just say that, um, thank you for inviting me to be here with you, uh, to share in God's word and to share in the good news of God's love for us in Jesus. One of the frustrating parts of this pandemic has been that music has been taken from us. And as we gather for worship, it's just not safe for us to sing. Thank you, Doug, for lending your voice uh, so that we can all join you in spirit and in, uh, in our hearts. I, I sense that music is a real strength in this congregation. And so how, how difficult it has been to have that um, musical uh, sort of uh, sharing um, taken uh, from us. But it won't last forever. And there will come a time when we can share in the music again, our, lift our voices in praise to God. So blessings to you all this week. I love your church. Yeah. Yeah, God's, God bless you. Thank you. Oh, I love them. Yeah, they're great people. You're so lucky to have such great music leadership here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you bet. Blessings to you.